crime event through Swan. Continuing now with newly elected and newly sworn in State Senator Darren Soto here on set one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so we left off talking about the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, also known as the Obamacare. Um, when it comes to health care, okay, and the constituents in your area, what demand have you seen for health care? Because here's what I'm running into. Uh, people out and about at the grocery store, at the gas station, uh, when we have these conversations, they go, okay, so if I wanted to partake in that, like, where do I go? Where do I sign up? Is there a website? How does that work? Well, first, looking at the general needs of the district, we have a lot of folks without health insurance. Part of them would come in under uh, allowing for folks who are up to 133% of the poverty line to be covered under Medicaid, and then the rest would be co covered under either a federal or state exchange. Now, both those things have to be approved by the state, but if we do nothing, then the federal exchange would occur either way. And what I'm finding is that not only do we have to make the decision of where we want to be, but then we're going to have to deal with this marketing, this public awareness of what people's options are. And certainly uh, there's um, going to be bugs we're going to have to work out of the system, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to have a long public campaign to make sure people understand uh, what they're dealing with on the uh, exchanges in particular. It's an exchange where private insurers would offer through a state uh, run exchange or a federal exchange and so knowing how to fill out the paperwork things like that not only do we have to let people know but my office would be there to help them okay. kind of do it much like we do with Medicaid and so will other their state representatives so it'll be a long informational process but mm -hmm. I think we can get through it so baby steps you know some of the criticism has been uh, gosh tell us an office that's run by the government that's efficient that does good things and so it is going to take time we just have to Walk, you know, walk through the process. Perfect segue to talk about how um, Governor Rick Scott is now softening his stance. He had said, no, I'm not going to implement any part of the ACA, but now he's saying, oh, wait a minute, let's rethink this. What are you hearing up in Tallahassee? Well, I'm hearing the same conciliatory tone by the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House, and I wouldn't know they actually kept an open mind from before the election. Okay. Listen, a lot of this was undetermined before we had the election. If uh, Governor Romney would have won, then uh, we wouldn't be having these debates. So it's so, a sign of new leadership right. up in Tallahassee. And I understand. Uh, I appreciate that Governor Scott is now keeping an open mind on it, and it's something that I'll be discussing with him uh, now that I'll be sitting on the select committee f uh, for the Affordable Care Act in the Senate. And there's compromise to be made. Uh, the Republicans want to privatize Medicaid in the state. And I think that could be somewhere where we may be able to reach a compromise on to privatize really? some of it to be able to reduce costs um, while also bringing a lot more people into it. When we're talking about the ACA, it would bring in 2 million more Floridians to have health care, whether it be under Medicaid or under the exchanges, and that's a conservative estimate. So we're talking a lot about, about a lot of folks in my district who don't have health care before who could have it afterwards. And we know the, the big quandary. They could already go to the emergency room. They could already get care, and we can't refuse it. And taxpayers have to foot the bill. So Yeah, $15 for an aspirin, and you hear all the horror stories right. throughout the years. And there's a reason why it's also $15 for an aspirin, because they have to make up for all those aspirin they give away for free. So the sure. whole idea is with more insurance among people, uh, the prices will go down. It's much like with uh, auto insurance. You know, is it a matter of freedom to be able to drive your car into someone else and not have to be insured? That's, you know, a just, whole, that's a whole other show. Well, so, society has a cost, and I think that's where we have to review this. And this was a Republican idea originally that was implemented by Governor Romney back in the day in Massachusetts. So I think there's a lot of common ground that we can meet. We just have to put the politics aside on this one. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, you know what, the government can't provide for everything. Right. How are we going to pay for everything? But I think, like you said, let's take the baby steps. Uh, once it's implemented fully in 2014, right. and we'll just have to learn as we go. Right, and let's be clear, part of it's Medicaid expansion. If it's privatized, then that would be private companies offering Medicaid. And the exchanges are an exchange in which private companies actually offer the insurance. So okay. you're not on a government insurance. And if the Medicaid program was privatized, you wouldn't be under a public insurance under any of these measures. So it's really a brought, public system yeah. to provide private insurance. I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's definitely a misconception. So thank you right. for that. Uh, speaking of Governor Rick Scott, he just recently um, came to Orlando and announced a proposal, okay, challenging state colleges to say, listen, how about if you accept, a, uh, take my pledge of uh, accepting, uh, offering a $10,000 college degree? Uh, and I, I mean, that was 
big, that made really big headlines. Is this a realistic goal? Can this be achieved? Well, I think it's worth it to give it a shot and see they're brilliant or we're going to find out it's not feasible. Um, but this is where... Is it a political you know, move, do you think, as uh, he looks for re-election in a couple of years? You know, you could say that about anyone. We're going to take the governor at his word, face value, that he wants to make education more affordable on the uh, postgraduate level. I think that's uh, a great idea to at least give it a shot. Um, we do need to see how it will affect universities. We do need to see uh, whether community colleges are up for the task. But I have my faith that we'll find out soon enough, and I'm certainly open-minded to the idea because, again, you go back to the district. My district, a lot of folks uh, are having difficulty affording four-year degrees. A lot of folks... So $10,000 would be very, very enticing. Let me ask you this. Do you think that children are over-tested? Yes. I do believe that uh, we have... We need to stick with one test. We're moving to that in high school now to Common Core, uh, which is uh, more of a subject test rather than FCAT. And then we're keeping FCAT for right now. But I think it's also a problem of how we use the test. While we may be able to grade schools, I don't think we should be having merit pay based upon that when there's too many other factors. And I don't think it particularly we should be denying schools funding because of these scores. It's a diagnostic tool so parents know where they're at where their children are at and where their schools are at, but it's been used too punitively, and I just don't, I, I think it's gone well beyond what it's been intended. Mm -hmm. Speaking of education and speaking of colleges and not getting personal, you just got engaged. That's true. A teacher. To a uh, public school teacher at, at Jackson Middle School, Amanda. So we're, I hear about education every day, and it's important, obviously. Very nice. Thanks so much for joining us. State Thanks Senator Darren Soto from District 14, thanks for being on our show, Political Connections. And now it's time for this week's Political Connections Bureau.